All right, guys, welcome back to Marshall Remodel. And I'm on an actual job site. This is where I put the septic system and water line in. And I'm coming back to build skirting for this double wide. So we're gonna build some skirting all the way around all four sides. And there's a couple things that I wanted to share with you um, when I do this. And with any, like with any house, you have to rodent proof your house, whether it's a stick frame, whether it is a post frame, or whether it is a mobile home. And so I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna go about that. It's similar than similar to how I do a post frame when it's on footings. Um, so the first thing is we got our treated lumber for our bottom boards. And then we have our regular construction lumber for the stuff that's not gonna be on the ground. The way the grade of this land is in the front, we have about 24 inches. In the back, we have about 36. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure on both, uh, all the way across the front, get uh, a measurement that is somewhat even all the way across so that all my metal can be the same length on the front and I'll do the same in the back. And then on the sides where it's not as visible, we will angle the front to the back since the elevation is different. And it'll make more sense once I get going. But the first thing is I gotta lay out my lumber and get framing. All right, so we got the bottom piece made. I got a green treated two by four on the bottom, two by four upright that helps straighten this bottom board. And it gives me plenty of room to nail my bottom trim to and then I'll have plenty of room to staple my house wrap and uh, screw my steel. I just like doing this because it gives me a nice solid platform and I'll do the same thing on the top, only I'll use two regular construction two by fours since there's no ground contact. And then every four feet we'll have an upright that is behind this so we can attach it. All right guys, so we got the top screwed in and that's good and solid we got the bottom one set in place now we're going to uh, just attach the bottom to the top using two by fours that you can see i left an inch and a half here an inch and a half here so i can cut the two by fours the length i need they'll get screwed in there and then i'll screw through the front into a two by four flat up to that and that will tie all that together and then we just have to build two more sections one full section and then I'll have to measure for the last section and yes that is a pig rubbing his back on my framing All right, so this whole front side is framed up. You can see I have plenty of room for the trims to be nailed on and the steel to be screwed on, same at the bottom. Now that we have this done all the way along, we need to run angle braces from the bottom plate up to a joist to do a couple things. One, stabilize this and keep the wind from pushing it and to straighten it all the way down along. I don't know if you can see it's crooked, but once I put all this bracing on it, it will be nice and straight. So I put a temporary angle on each end and leveled this or plumbed this. So I know that this is perfectly straight on both ends or plumb. Now, if I wouldn't have been a ding dong and left my string line at home, I could have just run a string line from here all the way down and then push this out accordingly. Uh, unfortunately, it's gonna be a little more difficult for me because I'm gonna have to uh, use a level. But we're gonna start at one end and just work our way across. All right, so we're gonna add a 45 from the bottom plates up to a floor joint. The bottom board or the 45? All I needed you to do is push this bottom in right there. Alright, 
All right, so it's been raining, of course, trying to do some outside and it rains. Yeah, so this side's all done. It's braced up, it's super strong. Really, really strong. So if we get any heavy winds, that'll help hold this wall from moving. Um, we're gonna take, once I get the two sides done, we will wrap all of this with house wrap. So that'll keep the air from penetrating underneath here. And then over that house wrap, house wrap will come down to here. We're gonna run aluminum, painted aluminum from here down into the ground. So I'll dig a little trench and it'll go in there and then dirt will be brought up in here. So that way that rodent proofs this below this grade board. All right, we're ready to do the skirting on the side, the framing. And as I told you, the front and back are even and the side's gonna be an angle. So we're gonna take a string line and attach it here. And then we're gonna attach it to the same spot on the other side and then I'll just cut my uprights accordingly so that this part of my board runs right along that string line. and three quarter. All right, so we're putting our aluminum down. And guys, you don't need many nails in this. You're not gonna see any of this, but I do color match it just in case between like the landscaping rock and the bottom trim, that rock gets down a little bit, it's, it matches uh, the siding. They're going with black metal. I did black flashing. None of this will be seen, but I still like to try to do as good a job putting this on as I can. I do a, a nail every about four feet and then I'll start putting some dirt up here and then this will kind of be sealed off. I got to do this all the way around um, and then I can order my metal and get my metal up. We have it all ready for steel. So you can see I framed it, got that all hooked up, squared, plumb level, trenched it out, put my house wrap around, and then I used 14 inch aluminum coil to nail to that bottom plate. And it goes down into that trench and then we brought dirt up around that. As far as the entrance to underneath the mobile home, I got this framed up. I'll build a door. That'll all get flashed in black 
aluminum so it'll look real nice and then my door will pop in and out of there so now all we have to do is I got to get measurements for my steel make a material list for my trims and then uh, get that order that should only take not even a week guys I went and picked up all the trim and metal to put along the bottom so the first thing we're gonna do is put all our top J trim on so that's as uh, simple as just button it up to the bottom of the siding and taking it all the way around so we're gonna get that done first and then we will set our bottom trim and we are down to our last piece <clears throat> which will meet up here and meet up right there so we're going to try to do this in one piece my measurement from the edge of my j trim to my corner is 75 and 3 8 then i make a little angle cut so these two pieces can overlap that's a half inch so 75 and 3 8 is 75 and seven eighths so that's where my corner is going to start so so 75 seven eighths and then we're going to mark one inch and two inches from there so 76 and seven eighths and 77 and seven eighths well you guys can see this so this right here is gonna be my corner so I'm gonna cut an inch I'm gonna bend that up and then I'm gonna make a diagonal cut across then I'm gonna take my rights and cut that out So now that we got that cut, our angle, we're going to cut this tab out right here, make a little angle cut back, and it'll work out real nice. And then when we bend this, we want to make sure this angle goes over the top of this right here. And you get a nice 90 degree corner. Now I can measure from this point out to my other stopping point. So we'll measure from the corner to there. Measure from this line over, and we'll cut that. 15 and an eighth. 15 and an eighth. Now we'll see if we can get this thing to fit. be a lot easier with two people we've got a seamless corner here hooks up right there and hooks up right there so now we are done with our J trim on the top all the way around and one thing you have to keep in mind this is a mobile home that has been moved a couple times and this is hard for me is it is not perfectly straight along that top so this J trim, I just butted it up against this bottom trim of the siding um, as best as I could. I'll have an inch play in there so when I slide my steel up in there, it will look really nice. Then if they ever go to reside this, all we have all they'll have to do is replace this top piece of trim 
with like a Wayne's coat trim and then they can set their siding right on top of it and it'll look real nice. So um, we're gonna go ahead and set all our bottom trims now, which they're straight across the front and the back, but they'll be angled along the sides. So I think to do it along the sides, I'm going to probably use a string line so I get it nice and straight across. All right guys, I got my first bottom trim cut. To set this, I don't have my laser level with me, so I'm just gonna use a string line. This trim, if you look at this trim, it's up, so it's two inches total. So I found the bottom of where I wanted the trim, measured up two inches in like an eighth, put a nail. Now I can hook my string line, run it all the way across, and then I just butt the top of the trim right up to my string line and nail it in. If you don't have a laser level, that's just kind of how you have to do it. You can see that. So now the top edge of my trim will just butt up right to that and I can nail it in. When you're cutting steel, these panels are three feet coverage, but they're 38 inches wide. So one uh, tip I can give you is when you're measuring to cut, my next piece, it's kind of hard to see with this black steel, but my next piece will actually start right here. So I need to take my measurement on this side right here, and then I'll measure over 38 inches and it should be one inch difference and as long as the first couple are the same one inch then I can just make my first measurement and then subtract an inch and this will go pretty fast so but just keep in mind don't measure from here measure from right here so I'm gonna do 27 to 26 and so now all I'm gonna have to do since this is consistent is get my first measurement and then subtract an inch so I'm gonna do 27 to 26 Now, unfortunately on this, my cut is on the bottom. But I'll show you the end result. Obviously it's not ideal. A shear that would cut angles would be awesome, but it's not something I have. Uh, rare occasion that you have an angle on the bottom anyway, but it actually looks pretty good. And darker colors are more forgiving as well. So you can see you can get a pretty good uh, finished look, even uh, cutting on the bottom. It's not what you ideally want to do, but like I said, this is kind of a unique situation where you have an angle along the bottom. We've got about, I don't know, 20 more feet to go, so I'm going to keep on trucking.
All right, guys, that's a wrap for this uh, mobile home skirting. Hopefully somebody out there can find this useful. Um, you can see down below that we have this color matched aluminum. Got a little access door here that we made. And it just makes for a really nice finished look using this steel. This should keep uh, the varmints out from underneath and, and keep, uh, keep it warmer in there in the winter and keep it cooler in there in the summer. So hopefully this was helpful, helpful to somebody. We appreciate you guys watching and we will catch you on the next video.